everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I've dyed a lot of yarn, I've dyed a lot of t-shirts, and today, well, we're gonna dye some t-shirt yarn. Now, I expect dyeing t-shirt yarn to be sort of a cross between tie-dye in a t-shirt and dyeing cotton yarn. You could use the same kind of materials. Uh, you want fiber reactive dyes or tie-dye. And then, well, you can have fun with a lot of different techniques. Today's episode of Dipot Weekly is sponsored by Serena. Thank you so much for suggesting this video idea. I'm really excited to give this a shot. I don't think I even knew that you could buy t-shirt yarn. So this saves a step in having to make it yourself. Uh, the yarn that we have is the Jersey Be Good yarn from Wool and the Gang. Uh, this 500 gram ball is 98% cotton, 2% elastine, and it's actually made in Turkey from fabric roll cutoffs. So it's using something that might otherwise be discarded, which is pretty cool. The yarn is pretty cool. It's definitely like a knit fabric and it does have some good stretch to it. I'm curious if there's going to be some sewn joins or something in here. I don't really know. I'll explore that. But the first thing I definitely need to do is go and wind this into a skein. In theory, one could tie-dye it in like this, but this ball is so, so, so dense and compact. While, while it would be really fun, it would be really hard. Like I can't even really move it apart to even stick a finger inside of that. Um, so, uh, but I'm impressed. So let's see, this is 500 grams and how many yards? I've never ordered from Wool in the Gang before. Uh, this doesn't have yardage on the ball itself. I believe the yardage information is on the website. While the ball is tightly wound, it is a center pull ball, so it should be fairly easy to go and with my skein winder, wind this into a circular skein that is more easy to manage. I turned this t-shirt yarn into about a two yard skein using the largest setting possible on my skein winder. I was curious about joins on this yarn and well, it was not hard to find one because they used a neon yellow thread. I'm honestly not sure about the fabric content of this thread here. Uh, I can think of two things. One, the join is obvious, so that way you can redo it in a way that you really would like, like maybe on a bias or something to make it a little less obvious. Uh, so maybe it's supposed to stand out. But if this join is cotton, then it'll take up dye as well. So yeah, I'm curious if after I dye this t-shirt yarn, I will still be able to see this join. I pre-soaked the yarn overnight so that way it would be really saturated so we could easily apply the tie-dye today. I also added a lot of reusable nylon zip ties as ties. We are tie-dyeing after all. I added them really, really tightly. And one of the reasons is that my hope is to put this through the washing machine at the end. But we'll get to that later. Today we're going to use four different colors of the Tulip One Step Tie-Dye. What I think is a deep green, maybe a lavender, sort of a turquoise, bright blue, and a navy. Unfortunately, I don't have the actual color names, but to my best guess, uh, these four colors came from the two kits. I think the navy came from this shibori kit, the lavender definitely came here, maybe even this the deeper green. If I can figure it out, I'll put the colors down in the video description, but uh, since these these bottles, which I love to reuse, but since these have the dye in them still, versus being the refills, I don't have the color names. I filled up all of the dye according to the manufacturer instructions, which was adding a little bit of water, closing it, shaking it up, and then filling it up to approximately the line. I put this skein through my spin dryer to remove as much of the liquid as I possibly could. This way we can add liquid back in, in the form of our tie-dye. So let's just get a sense of what these colors look like. Okay, so this green sort of breaks a tiny bit blue, um, or, you know, just diluted <laughs> versus being deep. Um, ooh, this is a beautiful blue. Um, ooh, I really like 
the pastel that we got here that's really cool. Um, typically with these tulip colors, if you wanted to get a pastel, you would need to have less pigment present. Um, so if you reduce the amount of pigment that you had on in the bottle or you know remove the liquid and then reduced it, that would be the best way to go about it. And here is our more navy color. So I haven't decided about the like order and the colors. We're gonna have some white spots because I tried to pull these zip ties pretty tight. But I think now I just want to see where these colors will take us. And also acknowledge that it's possible we're gonna need more than this amount of color that uh, we have here. Um, I have a feeling that this yarn is going to soak up a ton of liquid. So I'm not going to worry about full um, deep coverage. I think I'm going to start with something more like patchy, which I want this to have a tie-dyed feel. I want it to feel almost as though we created something made from a tie-dyed t-shirt. I think that that'll be pretty fun. So another idea that just occurred to me is that I could leave some white gaps between some of the colors, but not at uh, the resist points. And I think that that could be fun and cool as well. I am having, I would say, a lot of fun here already. Um, I like when we have that almost Normally, I don't like getting patchy. Um, I don't like patchy feels. I like getting like lots of pigmentation, but it's a tie-dye t-shirt, and so I think that that's gonna make it even more fun. And, you know, I'm not gonna worry about mistakes or colors not going where they want to go because the opening up and that reveal is one of the most fun parts of tie-dye. Now we might go back in and saturate things more. We'll see how things go. But for now, I'm pretty into it. Now, I don't know what we're gonna do for the rest because again, there are seven ties and I have four colors. But, you know, we're, we're seeing where this takes us. Okay, it's possible I'm gonna go back in, and actually it's seeming more likely. I still like this patchy and leaving those bits of white in there, but I think that you know the larger sections of white that I've left in, I might go and edit that out. So one thing I am doing for sure is I am opening up the skein around the tie to make sure I can get liquid in there and hmm 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 okay let's do the navy again the color that is going to be the most uh the one that's going the fastest is that like pastel mauve color but man imagine doing this as like a twisted skein or something that would be really fun and cool and I'm not worrying about the colors touching each other on the counter I think that this is all adding character and I gosh you guys don't I don't know if you know how much I just how much fun I'm having I want to go tie-dye some t-shirts that's what I really want to do now so most of the stuff I've done with fiber reactive dyes is with this one-step kit um, and one of my least favorite parts about dyeing cotton and dyeing yarn is the rinsing. Like that just, I find it laborsome and, you know, frustrating. But this is really well tied up. I think that if I put this, after doing some rinses to rinse the bulk of the dye out of it, I think if I put it in, um, I think that if I put this in, like a some kind of mesh bag then I can 
machine wash it. And I'm going to try. <laughs> uh, I am going to try because I think that that will help. And this is so heavy and removing liquid is so hard. I think that I would really, really struggle to hand wash it. So I'm not sure, given that I'm leaving a li little bits of white more intentionally, I'm not sure how much of a difference then the zip ties are gonna make, but you know, we will see. Didn't occur to me to have a yarn mop on hand for wiping the counter up. Eh, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'll just use this as the mop. Okay, added some blue in there. Let's add some of this blue in here. So doing this, it sort of reminds me of that, one of my favorite methods to do on the stove top with acid dyes or food coloring, and it involves adding like strips of color across, um, and it leaves these like small patches. And things are probably gonna spread. It's tie-dye, thing, things will spread. That's just our reality. But, I don't know. Something about this is getting me really excited. And even if the white disappears because these colors spread, having this uneven will give us some tonal variation in those areas. But when it comes to dyeing yarn for me, I like to let the colors speak to me. That is a big way that I pick the techniques. And with this project specifically, I'm sort of just letting the yarn decide what I want to do. Now, one thing that we can do is say, take a paper towel or something and check, and you see that we the color, it's not like it's struck. It is present, but it is sort of mobile. So that is something that we will want to keep in mind uh, as we continue this project. I might want to wrap it in some plastic wrap to keep the colors from transferring more than like what it is that I'm intending. I also like the thought of these color patches being somewhat random. Um, <laughs> Cause what's the color? So purple, blue, navy, green, blue, navy, blue, purple, navy, green. Yeah, it's random. Um, I like when I'm able to convince myself to do something like that. All right. Wow, this went faster than I thought. I think initially I thought I wanted to do something that was much more saturated, but to be honest, it's good for something like this to not be mega, mega saturated. Uh, and so let's see. Okay, I think I'm gonna move the die further back. I'm gonna move the yarn further back back and quickly wipe up the counter. Not like thoroughly, but just wipe it enough so that way I can put plastic wrap down, put the yarn back on top, and then roll it up into a jelly roll. The fact that the yarn isn't dripping wet is going to help us with this as well. Uh, this jelly roll is not going to be perfect, not by any Stretch. like even the ends are probably going to be slightly open um, there's areas where it'll still touch but it's going to be it's more ordered than it would have been if I didn't try wrapping it and now I'm going to oh goodness I don't know if this is gonna fit I'm going to attempt to put this inside a ziploc bag okay here we go I was able to get it in a ziploc bag and I'm going to put it in a secondary container and let it sit for Gosh, at least 24, probably more closer to 48 
hours. Um, I could try to steam set it, but I want to do a more traditional tie-dye technique here. Um, and the reason for having it in the Ziploc bag, though, is that you want it to be enclosed. You want this yarn to uh, stay wet, so that way the dyes can bind. I would love to say it's only been two days since I dyed Serena's yarn, but I'll be honest, then it's been closer to a week. Part of the reality of my current work situation is that it's just harder to get things done. But these colors are beautiful. I am so excited to remove the zip ties, but I'm actually not going to do that yet. Uh, we are going to start washing. There's a lot of bleeding going on, but we can expect that with tie dye. I am super excited with some of this modeling and variation that I see in here. I am going to start adding some clear dish soap for the ribs. But the big reason why I am not going to go ahead and take the ties off now is that I want to wash this in my washing machine. I have not ever tried that before, but I think that this t-shirt yarn is a good candidate. Um, as a t-shirt, it's not going to snag in the same way other yarn might, and so it might hold up a lot faster. Also, because this is so heavy, it's hard for me to wring out, and therefore it would be hard for me to wash this completely to clear by hand. Um, it's heavy, and you know, it's just not easy to squeeze. Uh, but I do want to get it so that way the water is more pastel before I go and put this through my washing machine. And I plan to put this inside some kind of delicate bag or mesh bag. That way it won't snag. I am not, however, going to put it through my dryer, just the washing machine. But I'm very, very excited with all of these colors. I think especially this lavender. Uh, if that's a color you can find, I think that's awesome. Now, of all these colors, the green did really, really well with that modeling. The blue just spread. I think that was strike slower. It spread and overtook it. The lavender did the modeled, and the navy did pretty well with the modeled. Just that brighter blue, which I'm glad it has so many sections uh, in here. So that is, I think, fine. Uh, when I put it through the washing machine, I do, ooh, should I use laundry detergent? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'll try not at first and try just doing like a standard, just like a soapless rinse. So I think just having the volume of water will help, but we will see and I will let you know <laughs> exactly what works. But you can see like we're gonna have a lot of bleeding for a while here. All right, so I think I'm gonna do two more rinses by hand. There is still a lot of bleeding going on here, but it is less pigmented than it was before. Um, and so after, I think just one more rinse now, because <laughs> it's taking me longer to talk than I thought, I am gonna go put this through my washing machine. There's a chance this mesh bag I put the yarn in will break in the washing machine. I have, however, used it to uh, try to dye some yarn with eucalyptus, and so it did hold up for that, so fingers crossed. But, I mean, you can see that we are leaking color, and so we need to get up to the washing machine. I ran this through the washing machine three times, and by all accounts, it looks great. Um, it was on cold, and now I want to loosen these zip ties. Um, in part, so that way we can see, oh, that actually isn't that much of a resist. In part to see the resist, in part 
um, so that way it can dry without being sort of crimped. Okay, here we've got more white. I think that there's a, gonna be a difference based on the pigmentation of the particular color. Ooh, pretty. And how tight I was able to have it. I will be leaving all of these zip ties on the yarn to function as additional ties, but I have to say, I love this and maybe this is worth trying with other cut types of cotton yarn. Uh, let's see about this bright blue one. This is the color that seems like it's spread out the most of all of the colors that I did. The one where we see the least modeling. Okay, we did get a little bit of resist in there. But now I don't need to put it through the spin dryer because it's been through the washing machine but I am going to hang this up to dry completely. This whole project worked so, so well, except for the repeating nature to our colorway here. You might actually think that this was a tie-dye t-shirt that you broke down into strips to make some t-shirt yarn. The variation of tone and that splotchiness that we created in these areas really does make it feel like a tie-dyed t-shirt. And well, we used a tie-dye kit after all. The standout colors for me for sure are this lavender. I don't think I've played around with a lot of pastel tie-dye and that really, really excites me. And this teal I think is great because it has so much depth and dimension in there. Oh, and the navy, oh, it makes it look so tie-dyed. I don't know, I, I love it all. I'm really, really thrilled. Serena, I'm gonna leave a zip tie on this yarn for you just so that way uh, if it loses its twist in traveling, it won't be super tangled. I recommend putting this around the back of a chair when you wanna wind it into a ball. Serena, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly but also suggesting that I get some t-shirt yarn to dye. I am so excited with how this turned out and I actually have another ball of this t-shirt yarn so I can play with it more in the future. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Coat Weekly, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. When slots are available, the listing will be available on Etsy, but feel free to message me on Etsy and I can add you to a waiting list to let you know when more slots become available. With the current global situation, slots are even more limited and they do tend to sell out quickly. Otherwise, a great way to get in contact with me and to leave suggestions for future videos is here in the comments section. I keep a running list of requests, suggestions, and questions that uh, I pull from when I go to film a new video. Don't forget to subscribe and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. I release videos at least twice a week, sometimes even more, and, well, you don't want to miss any of it. Man, this spring has been wild. We have had snow in Midway and some really, really warm days, but I'm excited for tie-dye and I hope to do some t-shirts and tie-dye more yarn this summer. Uh, I even have an interesting contraption that I thought would be worth giving a shot. <laughs> I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.